Hi, this is Tina. I do travel tips and family travel vlogs. And today I'm going to give you all the tips you need to know when visiting Disneyland and Disney's California Adventure Parks. Check out our Disneyland vlog and DCA vlog link down below. But this video is about all the tips on theme parks. I'm going to share with you how to get on the virtual queue, how to make dining and reservations, and the best photo spots. So keep watching! The Disney parks are located in Anaheim, California, which is about 30 minutes south of LA. It has two theme parks, the Disneyland Park, which has the Princess Castle, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, and Main Street USA. And across from the Disneyland Park, there is the Disney's California Adventure Park, or DCA for short, which has the new Avengers Campus, Cars Land, and the big Ferris wheel. Both parks and downtown Disney are all within walking distance to each other. The Disneyland app is what you use for everything. You use for dining reservations to get on the virtual queue like Web Slingers and Rise of the Resistance, which we will get into virtual queues later. You use it to check park hours, wait time, and do mobile food orders. You can also use the app to purchase tickets to Disneyland. Not only do you need to have the app downloaded, but you need to be familiar with the app before you go to Disney so you can get on the virtual queue on the day off. The Disneyland app is a separate app from Disney World in Orlando, so make sure to have the Disneyland app downloaded. Once you purchase your park tickets either through online or in the app, you need to link your tickets to the app and make park reservations. To link the tickets to the app, you can scan the barcode or input the ticket number. And make sure you have the park reservation for the date you want to go to Disney. Without a park reservation, you won't be able to get in the park even with a purchase ticket. You can make park reservations up to 120 days in advance, but as long as you make park reservations a few weeks in advance, you'll be able to get into the park of your choice. If you have a regular ticket, you'll need to choose which park you want to go to for the day, either Disneyland or DCA, and make reservations for that park. If you have a park hopper ticket, you'll need to choose which park you want to start your day at, either Disneyland or DCA, and make a reservation for the park you want to start your day at. Park hopping starts at 1 p.m., so anytime after 1 p.m., you can hop to the other park. There are two popular rides that require virtual queue, the Web Slingers in DCA and Rise of the Resistance in Disneyland. And there are a few things you need to do before you even try to get on the virtual queue. Have the tickets linked in the app for everyone in your party. So for myself as a family of four, I will have four tickets linked in my phone. And my husband will have those same four tickets linked in his phone so we can both try to get on a virtual queue and have a higher chance of getting on the virtual queue that way. You need to have the prospective park reservation for that date. So in order to get on the Rise of the Resistance virtual queue for today, you need to have a park reservation for Disneyland for today. And the same thing goes for Web Slingers. If you want to get on a virtual queue for Web Slingers for today, you need to have a park reservation for DCA for today. The virtual queue opens at 7 a.m. and 12 p.m. You can be anywhere, in your hotel room, at home, in the coffee shop, as long as there's good Wi-Fi signal because every second counts when you are trying to get on a virtual queue. If your Wi-Fi signal is bad and you're sitting there waiting for the app to load, then all the spots will be full and you won't be able to get on the ride. The virtual queue opens at 7 a.m. and 12 p.m. So a few minutes before 7 a.m., have your phone out, everything loaded, waiting at the join virtual queue page. And watch the clock count down the seconds to 7 a.m. and right at 7 a.m., slide down the virtual queue page, click all the way through, do not stop to read anything because those few seconds is going to cost you your spot. So just click all the way through to the end. And if you follow all of these steps, you should have no problem getting a boarding pass to the rides. And if you didn't get it, try again at 12 p.m. Everybody in your party with a phone should do this at 7 a.m. and 12 p.m. to increase the chances of getting on the ride. We've had success of getting the boarding pass but also have the experience of not getting it. So we've been through it all. If you have any questions, comment down below. I answer every single comment. If you like this video, remember to like and subscribe. I do weekly travel tips and travel vlogs to help you plan your best trip. In my opinion, Rise of the Resistance ride is not like any other, and it's the ride that you must go on, whether you're a Star Wars fan or not. That was so cool. I would go again. Yeah. Whereas Web Slinger reminds me a little bit of the Toy Story Mania ride, where you just try to shoot your target. It is still a fun ride, but it's nothing like Rise of the Resistance. 
To make a dining reservation, you need to have a credit card linked in your app. Dining reservations can be made up to 60 days in advance. If there is a popular restaurant that you want to go to, make sure to make the reservations early. The cancellation policy is one day in advance. If you don't show up to your reservation and you don't cancel it, your credit card will be charged. And for this reason, many people cancel their reservation the day before to avoid being charged. And that's the best time to check if your preferred restaurant have availability again. Certain restaurants also have the walk up option. You can join the walk up list in the app. However, you do need to be in the park and be fairly close to the park in order to join the walk up list. Once you join the walk up list, they will send you a text message once your table is ready. Don't sweat it if you can't get a dining reservation because Disney has plenty of options for mobile food order. You just order within the app, pay with the credit card already on file within the app, and pick it up at the restaurant. Once you place your mobile food order, there is a button that says, I'm here, prepare my food. Once you click on that button, the restaurant will start preparing your food. So you could be waiting for another 15 to 20 minutes for your food to be prepared. What you should do is on your way over to the restaurant, click on, I'm here, prepare my food. So they will start preparing your food. And once you arrive at the restaurant, your food will be ready for pickup. But when you click on the button, I'm here, prepare my food, that's when your credit card will be charged. So for whatever reason, if you change your mind, as long as you haven't clicked on the button and they haven't started preparing your food, you can cancel your mobile food order. At the time this video is made, Disney has not resumed their train service yet. So if you parked in the Mickey and Friends parking garage, it is a good 20 minute walk to the park entrance. Once you're at the park entrance, you still need to wait in line, go through security, scan your tickets, and that could be another 20 to 30 minutes depending on how long the line is. So before you leave the parking garage, run to your stroller, have your kids use the bathroom, then start your hike over to the park entrance. We are finally in after like what, 40 minutes from the parking lot. If you walk from Mickey and Friends parking garage to the park entrance, you'll pass by Downtown Disney. Downtown Disney is over there. On the way to the park, you go by Downtown Disney. Isn't that cool? Downtown Disney is free to go in and stays open one to two hours after the park closes. There's a large Disney store in Downtown Disney, a Lego shop, a Star Wars shop, which has all of the Star Wars costume, all the droids, all the accessories for your droids, lightsabers, you name it. They also sell the iconic Disney balloons in Downtown Disney and has lots of restaurants. So it's definitely worth checking out on your trip to Disneyland. If you're going with kids, buy your bubble ones ahead of time and bring them to the park. The bubble ones at the parks are more expensive and there's not that many varieties to choose from. When we were at the park, there was only the Mickey Mouse bubble one and the Ariel bubble one. And those were the two options. We literally checked every shop and every stand the bubble ones were sold and those were the two options all throughout the park. I got my daughter a Cinderella's carriage wand from Amazon and it is so cute and it's less expensive. The famous Mickey balloons are sold in both parks as well as downtown Disney. If your balloon flies away for any reason, you can take the balloon weight at the bottom to the cast member who are selling the balloons and they'll be able to give you a new one. However, keep in mind now you need to go back to where you originally made the purchase to get a replacement balloon. For example, if you get your balloon from downtown Disney and your balloon flies away, then you need to go back to downtown Disney to get a replacement balloon. The cast members at the theme parks won't give you a replacement which I found really odd because all the balloons look the same. And I literally had to walk 15 minutes out of the park to downtown Disney to get my replacement balloon. There are some light up balloons, but they're only go on sale at night and balloons tend to stop selling before the fireworks. At Disney World theme parks in Florida, you can take your popcorn bucket to get a $2 refill, but that's not the case in Disneyland or DCA. Here, they don't do refills whatsoever, even if you have a Disney popcorn bucket. Sucks, I know. Bring a portable charger and cable. You will be constantly on your phone, looking at wait times, doing mobile food order, taking pictures, and you definitely need to recharge your phone halfway through the day. They do rent out portable chargers at the parks for $30 each if you forget yours. And also remember to bring extra batteries for your video cameras. The following few tips are only pertaining to Disneyland. The princess meetings are happening at Royal Hall and there will be four to five princesses there at a time, which is 
pretty cool. You need to be careful because the app says princess meetings end at 7 p.m. But the cast member said that they end at 5 p.m. So always check with the cast member in the park what time the princesses will be there for if yourself or your kids really, really want to meet the princesses. If you're lucky and you got a boarding pass for Rise of the Resistance, and you're waiting in line to get on the ride and the ride breaks down, you have two choices, either to keep waiting in line or come back later. Always choose the come back later option. So have your ticket scanned before you leave the ride. And when you come back at a later time, you go through the fast pass. Essentially, you don't need to wait for the ride at all. We're going to Rise of the Resistance right now. And because the ride broke down earlier, we're going to go to the fast pass. Yes. If you are a Star Wars fan, make a reservation to build a droid, build a lightsaber, and sit down for a drink at Olga's Cantinas. We built our first droid at Disneyland, and I break down the droid making process for you in this video. Link in the description. If you forget to make a reservation, you can always go to Droid Depot to see if they have availability on the day off and join the walk-up list for Olga's Cantinas. What are the best photo spots at Disneyland? Let me tell you, it's not right in front of the castle. If you stand right in front of the castle, there will be lots of people walking and the people in the background will be very large and distracting. So here's the tip. Sit on the bench just to the side of the castle or stand in front of the gates. That way you can avoid people in your background being very large and you can get an awesome picture. In front of the Millennium Falcon, you can also get a really good picture. You just need to wait for the people in the background to leave. The next few tips only applies to DCA. Pixar Power Round is the big Ferris wheel in DCA. You have two options for the ride, either the swinging option or the non-swinging option. If you tend to get motion sickness, choose the non-swinging option. Also, it gets really cold on the Ferris wheel when you reach the top, so bring a light jacket if you have one. There will be a lineup to get into the new Avengers campus, and you could be waiting in line for an hour or two just to get in that section of the park. If you're lucky and you got a boarding pass for Web Stingers, don't line up for Avengers Campus because you'll be able to get in without lining up when it's your turn for Web Stingers. When your boarding pass is called, you just walk up to the cast member at the entrance of Avengers Campus, show them your boarding pass and they'll let you in to line up for Web Stingers. And after the ride is done, you're free to roam around Avengers Campus. So essentially, you got in Avengers Campus without lining up. The best photo spots at DCA. At DCA, you need to get a photo with the iconic Ferris wheel. But anywhere you stand, there will be people walking behind you and they will be in the background of your photo. The best spot to get a photo with the Ferris wheel is on the walkway just in front of the pond. You can get a really good photo there and nobody's gonna be in your background. Inside Avengers Campus, go in Doctor Strange's garden and there you can get a really trippy photo looking like you're standing on a concave ground. If you wait for the crowd to leave a little bit, you can get some really pretty photos in Avengers Campus. Avengers Campus is especially really pretty at sunset. So that's all the things you need to know before visiting Disneyland and DCA in California. If you enjoyed this video, you might also enjoy the things you need to know before going to Universal Studios Hollywood and if it's worth it to get a joy at the Joy Depot. If you have a question, comment down below. I answer every single comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram. I'll see you next time. Bye.